For something that was once considered obscured knowledge on how to appear on one screen or the other is now more accessible to the point others have intercepted calls claiming they are hackers when in reality they're nothing more than script kitties that figured out how to face two tabs together with software that's easily accessible if one knows where to look. Much like in my previous video on how to intercept two video calls once exclusive on Windows OS's can now be performed entirely on Linux distributions of all kinds as long as all dependencies are available in that particular package manager in which it'll all be covered on a much safer platform so this is where we begin to become the next middleman Ever since I've uploaded my previous video, not only had I got a good number of people telling me that they've been having a few issues following the audio part here and there, which can be solved relatively easily by other means, I've also made a few slight editing errors overlooking the fact that you have to also include the virtual aux cable driver in which I actually forgot to mention. Also, a day or two before the official release of that video, one of the Omega staff members had reached out to me asking me how this is done in order for them to resolve the issue which may have contributed to the slight updates going on on Omega. So this method may or may not work later on if these issues have been addressed but that's just speculation on my part. But other than that I've also noticed that a good number of other individuals had used my technique to start their own endeavors in which all of them at the time of this video are using Windows and yet rarely anyone is even using a far more safer and more reliable platform in which I'm going to show how it's done with a somewhat similar method except some of the programs and configurations will differ but overall will do the job the FOSS way and even take advantage of the system's capability on a platform used by actual hackers or anyone that prefers free software over proprietary means. Before anything, you'll need to decide which Linux distribution will you be using. So depending on what you're going to use it for, it's best that you pick one distro that has all the basic necessities. Some will have their own default package managers, others will use something like Git, and several others that I'm yet to mention, assuming you have basic knowledge on how to use it. You'll need OBS Studio and all its dependencies. You'll also need OBS V4L2 Sync for the virtual webcam feature plugin unless it already comes with it by default in later versions of OBS, as well as V4L2 Loopback for the virtual webcam to function. For the audio aspect, you'll need Jax Audio as well as its front ends. There are a couple of choices here and there, but the one I recommend is Cadence with Cati for both parties to be able to hear each other or even output desktop sounds as an input. I highly advise that you pick a VPN that not only covers your exact location, but one that respects your privacy and is located outside of the 14 eyes. And I highly discourage the use of free VPNs as those will log your private browsing information, so do not use those if you're planning to log in from your accounts. Unless you want to just use your voice only, you have the option to connect either a webcam for others to see you, or you can use an image, or in this tutorial, I'll be using Q2 Sour Bratton for this demonstration. I've used on previous streams. You can use other programs or character avatars as long as it's supported on Linux, which more choices will come later on. In order for both parties to be able to hear you, we're going to have to go and set up the virtual audio jack. So in this case, we're going to open this one here. Of course, it may have already started on its own. So for in the meantime, we're going to press off. Now, let's go make sure the bridge type is here. It has to be set up at Alice, uh, Odd Pulse Audio Jack plugin, or Alsa, Alsa, Alice, ah, whatever. So we go to configure right here now. We'll just leave this as is. We go to driver engine. Make sure it's pointed at Alsa, Alsa, however you say it. 
Now we make sure your input is going to be the one you're going to use. So if you're not sure which one it's called, you can always go to your audio mixer to the configurations and you'll see the name from there. Like for instance, I'm using a USB PNP audio device. So we go and pick the one that matches. And then for the, for the input and as for the output, we're going to use the one that's matching the one from the volume control. In that case, it's a, it's the HDMI uh, zero. And once that's done, we can just leave everything as is, but it's up to you if you want to change the audio sample rate buffer or mess with these other settings. Now we just press OK. And before we press the start button, we must go and do this. It's not going to show anything right now, but once we press start, you won't be able to hear what I'm saying, nor will the other people be able to hear each other. So we'll press start and then we'll do this. So both audio out and audio in should point to jack source, to the pulse audio jack source on both inputs and outputs in order to be able to hear one another. Now, through that, we need to go to tools, then we'll open this up. You can choose either this or that, but I, I find it more convenient to use this first option right here. So this is a visual representation on what can be heard. Where it says system up here, this would usually be your audio input, which would be the mic of choice. So if you want to be heard by both parties you definitely want to put both front left and front right and then you want to do the same thing with pulse audio jack sync simply hook up both front left and front right to pulse audio jack source and this is where people can hear both each other and you however if you want to make sure they're both working you can always go back here and use a meter as a representation on whether anyone can hear you or not just to see that it works and of course if you want Want to ensure that both are working because the meter can only hear one you want to poke up the system which is the capture into the second one and now hear what you're saying and you can do the same thing with the pulse audio jack sync hook it up to the meter so you can ensure that both parties can hear each other or have a visual representation a very optional thing not necessary but it's very helpful to have. Now we can just exit out of all this and proceed to the next step. Now let's go open a terminal. Then we type in this command where it says sudo mob probe v4l2 loopback, press enter. Then type in your password, press enter, and it should go through. Then we should go and activate two cameras or virtual cameras, I should say. So as you can see, it's going to give us one, two, but you can change these numbers to whatever you like. Then where it says card label, it'll show the names of whatever we're going to name the, the virtual cams, which we need both of them. You can pretty much name it whatever you like. I'll just leave it to the ones that I chose. But you you have the option to basically change it to a real webcam to trick the website that you're using a real camera. Now we just press enter and in case that doesn't work or it's giving you some kind of error we have to go do this to our mod the loopback press enter and try adding this again in hope that it'll let you through and to indicate that you successfully added the virtual cams it should just do this and now that we're done with this we can go and open up OBS. So we're going to launch anyways. Now let's go and make sure we go to tools to V4L to sync and we just type in one of our virtual cams. It'll probably give you a number or that's already there, but we can change the number to the ones we just put the, or the one that you decide to put. And then we press start and it should look like this. And if it gives you error, that means it has not been set up. Let's just exit out of that. Now let's go and open up a browser. I'll just open Firefox. You can choose any other browser, but we're just using this one for this demonstration. Now we just put this in the corner somewhere. We'll open up Omega. What we're going to do for this scene, or the sources, I should say, is press this button, the plus sign, which is add. Then we go to Window Capture or at Composite on Linux. Now let's give it a name. You can put anything you like, but I'm going to add this to make it easier to identify. Where it says Window, we click here. Then we add the one right here where it says Mozilla Firefox as shown in the tab until it gives us this. So we're going to need to do 
some further adjustments here. So what we're gonna go is back on this tab, then we'll just press video. We can just allow it just so you can see what you're doing here. And yes, it's gonna give you these uh, orders down here. So we're gonna go and fix that up. So we go back to OBS, then we go to settings. It's a little different from the windows, but this will give us some results. Video output is currently active. So we need to go and deactivate this. So what we're gonna do is do this, then in case that doesn't work, disable the V42 sync. We go back to settings and end the video and we're now able to do some changes. You can pick any resolution, but as long as the aspect ratio is like, for instance, we can, we'll just try this resolution that we're putting here. And then where it says output scaled resolution, we'll just match it to the one on top, press apply and okay. So now it's gonna give us a square resolution and press this button down here to show what's going on still gonna do some further adjustments here what I'd like to do is I just go back here then go to video again surely it's not gonna show us the camera in order to solve that we'll just go here and then click X here and here then we go back and then video again or just refresh entirely and we allow so the reason why it would give us this is because I forgot to activate it so we need to go here and make sure that's activated and then it'll allow so this will give us a better view on what needs to be adjusted and what's going to be shown on screen so we'll just pause this here then we go to omega or at least the source name omega or whatever name you put on then we go to properties and we will adjust all the pixels until we get everything just fits you know let me go and do some further adjustments and now that everything is adjusted we'll just scroll down i would recommend just unchecking this where it says capture cursor we press ok and we can definitely do some adjustments and there we go should be able to look like this no one will know the difference so if you want to take this a step further and get rid of these black borders that are here in obs we just simply do this unsee whatever's on here then we go back to settings i keep forgetting that we have to go to tools to v4l to sync and stop it exit out and then we can go and do some further adjustments we can try this resolution but you might want to continue playing around with this until you get everything just right we're close enough now once that's done simply uh, go back and activate it and yes it's going to give us this kind of resolution it's going to be a little too stretched so again this is all up to you on how you're going to mess around with this Now, we will have to go and open a second tab. Once that's done, I would suggest we open us, we make a new scene. So we right click, we duplicate this scene. We'll just leave it as is, but you can always change the name if you like. Now, once that's done, let's go and open a second OBS. And this window is gonna pop up, so we just press launch anyways. And there we go, it saved the profile. And we can just do this. I'll just leave this here and go to this scene. Now we can go to Omega or whatever you name it. Then we go capture the second tab, the one that we gave it for the browser. And then we got this. Now let's go and open this. Go to Omega on the second one. Before we do anything, I would suggest we go back here again and instead of one, put in the second number. In my case, I'll just put two and when we press start, it should activate. We can exit out of here and now we can go and go to video. Here, it's gonna give us the camera. The second one should show. We click on that. You always wanna make sure you have jack sources. We allow. So again, there's gonna be a lot of adjusting to do and to make sure you get the right one, we gotta go and and open up one of these you'll have this issue where it duplicates so you may have to go back and do some further adjustments until you get everything just right now that we have this we can definitely try this out and of course it's not supposed to repeat itself so to make it a lot easier we just need to go and basically try this and if it duplicates well yeah that's gonna be an issue So after messing with all the settings later, you should be able to see these loading screens here where one screen shows up on the other tab and vice versa. Now we need to go and get rid of this uh, watermark on both ends. This is when we've got to make sure we have something like uBlock Origin. So once that's added, we can go 
click here. Then we click on element picker mode. Then we select this watermark. And then this little window will pop up. We'll press this button right here. It says create and then it disappears. It's always a good idea to do the same on the other one. And you do this once, it'll not show up without possible evidence for the other people to notice that detail. And there we go. This is pretty much uh, how it works. And of course, you can see these weirdos uh, on the screen. As, as long as the other person can see <laughs> these struggling. each other and they can hear each other, then you're set. Anyways, that's just a demonstration. So what we're going to do is add a second source. For instance, you can pretty much add anything you like, rather it's an image, a video, or another program. So in this demonstration, I am going to open my signature game when I go live, which is Cube 2 Sour Bratton. So in my case, I've already created one map, which I named it Omega Stream. And of course, everything is set to green. I can chroma key all this in OBS. For both scenes, we're just going to add window capture we'll just call it whatever well we go to window and we just click on the program or whatever you want on your screen once we're done do some further adjustments like for instance we want to get rid of the green here we're gonna right click on the source filters we go down here to press the plus then we go to chroma key press ok it'll already uh, get rid of the green for you but in case it has a different color you can always go to these other down here or to custom select whatever color you like but since that that is already done for me on here close all that got it all transparent you can resize it until you get it just right without any anything being shown and you can do the same on the second scene down here we do the same thing but instead of create a new one we just add existing one and click on whatever you wanted to add on the second one adjust that one too so it'll show on both scenes so in case it doesn't show on the second obs we just simply exit out of that and reopen obs launch anyways sometimes it will not show up right away we can just simply go to the plus again to window capture if you have to you can just create a new one find the program or whatever you want to be captured. Pretty much repeat whatever changes we made. Adjusted some more. Pretty much this is how it's gonna show up on both Omega tabs. And if I only want it to show on one screen, I can just <laughs> press this button and they only and they only see on one screen or I can disable it on the other screen and they don't have to see the other character. And uh, yeah, you can pretty much move around and both parties should be able to watch each other. What's up? Yes. <laughs> as simple as, as that. Simple as that. And this is all done entirely on Linux. <laughs> it's definitely far more lengthier than the previous one, but due to its complexity and all the extra steps needed in order to really make it work, and why you should use Linux over Windows when it comes to intercepting calls, it can be quite a rewarding experience knowing that you have full control on every aspect of the system, giving you lead status. Once again, I do not condone any malicious use of any of these methods. Do be careful on what you send or say, cause you will never know who could be hiding behind the screen before it is too late, so use at your own risk. Till then, and this is LR7 showing you that it's possible to intercept calls on Linux and logging out. Hey mom, I hope you can see me on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I love you, you know that. <laughs>